Hi, everybody. This is Drew Tomlin with the Association for Middle Level Education. And today I'm joined on this Google Hangout by Greg Richards. Greg Richards is the founder and director of the Middle Grades Ethics Project. Uh, he's devoted to, and that program is, dev is devoted to helping schools foster positive values and development for students in grades five through nine and their communities. Uh, and not only does he, that, does he do that, but of course he's the wonderful author of this article that you're checking out in AMLE magazine entitled Educators and Law Enforcement, Teaming for Character Education. So thank you so much for taking some time with us today, Greg. My pleasure, Drew. Terrific. So again, a, a, an outstanding topic and something that we wanted to talk a little bit uh, more about. So um, the question that I always like to start with um, is, is the inspiration of it all. So what inspires you about this topic? Uh, and why is it so critical to think about the role of SROs, school resource officers, in the middle grades? Well, my concern, of course, is for the development of, uh, of ethical character. And I know that that's most effective uh, when all the significant adults on campus serve as role models, uh, are consistent in, in uh, living out those uh, school character traits, school core values, looking for teachable moments to remind students of of those uh, qualities that the school is urging the kids to follow and also uh, uh, commending those kids who are exemplifying those values during the day. School resource officers are around a lot in the duties of uh, protecting the school and uh, protecting the students and faculty. Uh, very visible person as a role model and also would be available to uh, to see what student life is going on and uh, and how to how to how to direct that how to keep that on a positive basis, I've met a lot of uh, very inspiring school resource officers in the last couple of years. I first adapted my mini course for law enforcement officers to teach in middle schools when a school resource officer came up to me at a conference where she was actually being honored for her bully prevention program, mm -hmm. and uh, came to a brain development session that I was leading and I was speaking about an ethics mini course as a way to scaffold positive development of young adolescents and she wanted to know more about that ethics class. The long and the short of it is I adapted the program. She's been teaching 350 seventh graders a year this year and last year and uh, her captain has now authorized that to be taught by all 12 sheriff's deputies in her county coming up now uh, for next year. So there'll be, uh, what is it, uh, 1,800, 1,900 students, seventh graders will be taking the course, wow. excuse me, 3,800, 3,800 seventh graders will be taking the course next year in Naples, Florida. These are great people. They have a great passion for helping kids. And uh, uh, I know that they do everything they can to help the kids that have kind of a spotty record do better. They inspire kids to go into law enforcement, and a lot of them have been inspired in turn by their own school resource officers to follow that career. There you go. Well, th well thank you for, uh, again, for authoring this article and then shedding some light on it, too. I, I loved how you said that, it's a, that school resource officers have the ability to direct um, student life and be knowledgeable about student life and, and be positive about that as well, because they are such a visible presence or should be a visible presence in our schools, which really, it takes me to my second question. Um, what are the characteristics that middle level leaders should look for uh, in an SRO in their school? What characteristics on the contrary um, should they avoid uh, when either hiring or working with an SRO? I know that could be a touchy subject. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to defer to begin with to the National Association of School Resource Officers as my authority. All right. They encourage uh, law enforcement agencies and schools to work together to screen and select uh, officers for school assignments. Uh, they urge everyone to look for the right fit. And they, uh, uh, this, of course, can vary from state to state, from law enforcement agency to law enforcement agency, from school district to school district. But the ideal to me would be a trained professional law enforcement officer with some sophisticated knowledge and positive experience uh, with young adolescents. And for me, of course, that officer also can teach and teach subjects like ethics or character, uh, bully prevention, chemical abuse, substance abuse prevention. 
And then finally, someone who is what the brain literature now calls a charismatic adult, mm. someone who's a good listener, who's a mentor, uh, who helps students. I love this phrase, who helps students find their islands of competence and Ooh. helps them find ways to use those strengths uh, for school where they get positive recognition to serve, to lead. And uh, we know that that can inoculate students against all kinds of risky behaviors. And and get them going on a, on a new path in life. So I've seen uh, those qualities lived out by a lot of these school resource officers that I've met. That's great. I love how you said inoculate students against uh, some of the bad stuff that's going on out there. So if that bad stuff out there is potential uh, for, you know, to, to infect them or to, you know, negatively impact their lives, that SROs could be that remedy, can be that inoculation that students need uh, in order to go forward in a more positive way. Um, so why is it so important for, uh, you mentioned teaching and SROs uh, being you know, adept at teaching. Why is that so important for SROs to teach um, both students and teachers in the middle grades? Well, I think that it really establishes uh, a very normal relationship of the SRO with the faculty and with the students. Teaching is the main, the main job that's going on at school. And I think that uh, a law enforcement officer can bring experience and a new perspective on, on what they believe right and wrong means in society and uh, can help guide students. I think that uh, school climate and new learning are always improved uh, with more student adult connections on campus. And I think that uh, can really broaden student life and, and student learning to have those, uh, those connections. Terrific. Right. So those those connections and, and being an instructional leader can help build those connections. So, you know, you've listed the, the characteristics that you feel are important um, and the strengths that leaders should look for and, and help to foster in their SROs. So what can middle level leaders do, though, to, to help their SROs grow in these areas if they aren't comfortable with being more involved in the ways you suggest? Uh, how, how can they support them as they adopt these new roles and characteristics? Well, I think that uh, the, the folks that I've spoken with who are, you know, executives in, in law enforcement agencies who, who lead these uh, school resource officers are concerned there be a partnership from the beginning and mm -hmm. that, uh, that the school resource officer is welcomed as a faculty member. They are trained at NASRO, this national association that certifies officers uh, trains them and orients them to teach and also to come in for guest speaking uh, opportunities. Right. But somebody has to let them teach, let them in the classroom. I think that uh, they can uh, also uh, improve school climate uh, and, uh, and new learning. Uh, I think that uh, the school leader can encourage and mentor just like you'd mentor any new teacher on the faculty, mm -hmm. include them with faculty if they're going to teach in character ed, if there's a faculty group that meets regularly to plan character education or strategize uh, character education, that, that that officer be included if you want them to be doing some teaching in that. And certainly include them in faculty in service and continuing education that helps them be better adept at understanding the uh, you know, young adolescent development and middle school life, school policy. Right, right. And, and like you like you had said, I think one of the things that you said that just resonated with me um, was that someone's got to let them teach. Someone's got to give them the opportunities to practice and to shine in those different ways. Um, so I think in one of the maybe most valuable lessons is that middle level leaders need to understand that SROs can have and should have those roles. They're not just there to um, serve and protect or anything like that. They're, they should be there to build those relationships. Um, all right, so the, the last question, Greg, is a, a metaphorical one, and um, it's quite arresting, if I can, <laughs> if I can say that. Um, what, what metaphor or symbol, um, be it an object, food, song, natural object, comes to mind when you think about the role that SROs should play uh, in middle schools and, and, you know, elaborate on your choice for that similar metaphor, please. Well, you warned me about this question. So I, was <laughs> really I, I thought about it, you know, and I think that uh, the symbol I would uh, 
use actually two symbols are the rod and the staff, the tools that ancient shepherds used in, uh, in the Middle East and Africa and many places in primitive societies. Shepherds still use those two tools. The, uh, and there's reference to it in the 23rd Psalm, of course, the shepherd having the, the shepherd's crook in one hand and the rod, the, the, uh, the, the weapon uh, to beat off uh, predators in one hand, even lions and the shepherd's staff or crook to uh, to guide to rescue and i think one of the beautiful uh, images that, that i've that i've read is uh, the shepherd using that staff to uh, to locate a a brand new lamb just born lamb newborn lamb return it to its mother by without touching it by very gently and adeptly picking it up underneath with his crook and placing it back next to the mother so there's no scent on that that lamb except the mothers, but the whole image of a of a shepherd returning uh, a baby to its mother, I think, right. is a when you think of some of uh, the work the school resource officers prepare to to do at school in terms of protecting the school. Uh, I think that that's uh, that's the images I would use to keep the students safe and to give them support, which is really what middle school students need. They need uh, authoritative guidance. You know, they need. They need limits, and they also need a lot of support. They need uh, people who love them and care about them, who are also in their face when they need to be. A lot of energy at middle school, and you need an energetic staff to uh, to uh, to meet the to meet the challenge. There you go. Well, that's a very very, very powerful symbol. So thank you so much for giving that such good thought. Uh, I, I knew you would. You're you're an advanced learner uh, and student, so I appreciate you doing that, Greg. Uh, yeah, so rod and staff, that, that dual nature of the role to uh, just really, really good. And, you know, working with SROs, um, you can't be sheepish, you know, uh, as you said, with the, if they're going to be a shepherd, you can't be sheepish. Um, so there thank you, you so much. And, and again, you got to have those positive experiences with young adolescents in order to serve them. So um, thank you for those reminders, not only in, in today's art in this uh, conversation, but in the article itself. So thanks again, Greg. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Awesome. And, and thank you so much, AMLE Magazine readers, for checking out this article and this interview today. And uh, here at AMLE, where we help you reach every student, grow professionally, and create great schools. All right. Thanks again.